Good morning, good morning, Asia. It's so good to see you this you morning. Too. It's cold weather we're having. I know. Oh. Well, thank you so much for meeting with me this morning. Um, I am so excited about the lesson that I'm going to be seeing in your room tomorrow. Um, it's just refreshing to go into your classroom and see you and your fourth grade students. So as we think about that um, lesson that I'm going to be observing tomorrow, I just wanted to kind of set the stage for that okay. today and have you talk through it a little bit and help me to make sure I give you the best possible picture of your instruction that I can. Mm -hmm. um, and does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, also, I have to tell you, I'm old, you know that, and I might need to take a few notes. Is it okay if you see me jot down some notes? Is that all right? Oh, absolutely. Because yeah. <laughs> I forget. Okay. Okay. So, um, I want you first, just to, because I am old, just refresh my memory a little bit. Um, talk a little bit about your refinement area that you're working on right now from your last observation, just to kind of refresh us about what you're working on right now. Okay, that's going to be peer-to-peer um, -peer feedback. Mm -hmm. Um, regarding students as they work um, self-assessing and assessing other students work um, and so the goal is to establish criteria mm -hmm. earlier in the lesson so that as students work they are able to refer back to that criteria and give explicit feedback um, to their partners based on criteria for mastery. Wow, wow, that's, that's, yeah, I remember, yeah. And I know you've been working on that a lot in mm -hmm. my walkthroughs. I've seen, you know, that you have those things that you've been pushing out with your kids to make sure that they understand those expectations. Right. And it seems to be working pretty well. Mm -hmm. Have you seen an improvement in student achievement since you've really been honing in on that? Oh, absolutely. Um, they, once they have the criteria for mastery laid right in front of them, yeah. um, they know exactly where their mistakes are and they can help others find their mistakes, if any. Wow, that um, does. Right it, away. That's what I notice when I'm going through the walk. It, it really seems to be making an impact. Mm -hmm. So, wow, terrific. So, um, I know I'm going to see some good things mm -hmm. when it comes to that and, and um, seeing um, your instruction and what's happening in the classroom. So, as we think about the lesson that's coming tomorrow, just give me, like, set the stage for me. Just tell me about the lesson and what's going to happen in the lesson. Walk me through it. Okay. I'm going to be introducing number patterns. Um, it'll be the first day that we do that. Um, specifically, they have to find a rule. There's actually two learning targets. So you have to find a rule for a given pattern, and then the other one would be to generate their own pattern based on a given rule. Um, so they have to have, obviously, number sense. Um, be able to determine if things are, if patterns are increasing or decreasing based mm -hmm. on the numbers given. Um, and, and the opposite of that is figure out what um, rule. Wow, yeah, Woo. you got some heavy thinking that's gonna be <laughs> happening in that lesson. So, so the students basically are gonna be looking and, and generating those patterns mm -hmm. and, and, um, and then Wow, figuring out if it's increasing or decreasing, which is huge for fourth graders to be able to look at something in that through that lens. And then also thinking about the rule. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hmm. And what kind of things are you going to be doing in the lesson to be able to move? Because that's a lot of thinking going on, girl. Right. So. We will um, first just explore some numbers and see just kind of what they notice right off the um, right off just to see if they can identify trends or features of a given set mm -hmm. of numbers. Um, I will model explicitly my thinking. Mm -hmm. um, they will help me come up with the steps that I use and some criteria mm -hmm. for, for mastery. Mm -hmm. um, they will practice in small groups okay. with partners and then ultimately be able to do it independently. Wow. Wow. Okay, so so you'll be kind of leading them in with a little review, you know, making sure that they um, that they understand patterns, that they understand what they're going to be doing, mm -hmm. um, increasing, decreasing, and then they'll be working um, with you to uh, establish that criteria, and and then you'll be giving them a little practice at really trying to apply that after you give them a good model for that. Mm -hmm. Wow, that that sounds like the perfect setup you know, for, for what you want to happen in that lesson, providing that model, I think is going to be important too. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. So, um, I know you talked about them kind of working through some of the, um, the patterns um, together. Uh, how are you going to group them, or how are they grouped in the classroom? Um, right now they're just sitting in their small groups, just their regular seat. I mean, mm -hmm. since, it's a fir since it's the first day, there won't be a whole lot of grouping up. Once I get their formative assessment from this day and we move on to the next day, then I'll be able to better differentiate 
um, based on who got it, who didn't, mm -hmm. who um, was on the right track but possibly made a just a small calculation error, yeah. or um, or maybe my kids that are just completely maybe they can't decide whether it's increasing or decreasing. Yeah. Um, I'll be able to better group them based on the formative assessment I do t um, tomorrow. So you definitely have some. Um you put some thought around how they might work together, but since this is one of the first lessons mm -hmm. in this, you'll be really trying to hone in on that formative assessment piece and seeing how kind of the students are doing mm -hmm. and, and moving towards mastery. Okay, that, that makes sense. That makes a lot of good sense. So um, as you think about that, because I know one of the things that you do really well is your questions to kind of formatively assess and I know in other lessons that I've observed in your classroom. So have you thought about or planned your questions, some of the questions you're, you're going to be asking? Um, I've thought about them, but they kind of just come to me. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. I, I feed off my students and um, one thing that I have learned is instead of giving them the answer or telling them where their mistake is, is, is to question them and ask them and kind of guide them there because ultimately I want them to be able to self-assess. So by me questioning them, mm -hmm. they learn to question themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the obvious question would be, is the, are the numbers increasing or decreasing? And then by how much? So those are, those are some questions you're gonna see on the criteria, mm -hmm. the main questions they need to be asking themselves. Excellent. Um, which but is I'm, huge there. Yeah. <laughs> that they'll yeah. be asking themselves. That's where we want to go. So they own the learning. So you, and that's something you really are so well versed in is being able to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. I know. So you're thinking about scaffolding up, you mm -hmm. know, and, and starting with so are the numbers increasing or decreasing, which is the foundation for this piece. Right. Excellent. Excellent. So, um, so talk a little bit about the way that, um, that you plan to engage the students in the thinking process. I mean, you talked about the think aloud. Are there any other ways that you're gonna ensure that students are using those questions that you want them to use? Yes, um, one thing that I do that I found is helpful is I print out um, the flip chart that I'm using. So they have it, they have the problems directly in front of them so they're able to actually write on them. And as I'm modeling my thinking, they're writing my thinking down. Also, so they have that as a model right there in their journals. Um, we do a lot on the whiteboards as well. Okay. Um, that way when they hold them all up at one time, it's easier for me to see all of them at the same time. Yeah. Um, and they will write the questions down that we come up with together, or the, the criteria basically. Mm -hmm. um, they'll have that in front of them to refer to. Excellent. So I'll get to see that that piece you've been working on a lot to refine mm -hmm. is is really making sure that you set the stage for that um, student to student feedback that's that's going to be happening in there with having that criteria because that's that's important. How mm -hmm. can they know what to do if they don't have you know how can they get feedback if they don't know what that might look and sound like. Mm -hmm. So excellent, excellent. Are there anything or anything that you want me to know or that you think I need to know before? We, I come in there. Um, is there any, any special circumstances or something you want me to be aware of? I have a pretty active class. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of students talking mm -hmm. at one time. <laughs> um, we do a lot of group work, a lot of um, work as a table, come up with it as a group, compare answers. Um, I would just say it's pretty pretty chatty, pretty active classroom. <laughs> it's a very active classroom. Okay, sounds good. And so I know usually you'll uh, fix me a little spot where you want me to sit where I won't be too much in the way. So um, I think we're, we're good to go. I look forward um, to seeing your lesson tomorrow. Yeah, Thank you thanks. so much. You too.